Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about exporting session data and importing session data using AAF files. Um, there's another file called an OMF, which is an older file format that kind of does the same thing. But AAFs are what you'll commonly see if you're sharing session data between softwares. So, I mean, you can use it from one Pro Tool session to another, but the the glory of an AAF file, which I think stands for Advanced Authoring Format, is that it can share session data and clips and media and everything between different software. So you could go from one DAW to another DAW. You could go from a DAW to an, a video editing software like Final Cut Pro or Avid. Um, and they're great. So you have to think of it as kind of like a, in a weird way, a universal session file. Um, it will only bring data, though, that's usable by every software. So there's some more general information about, like, clips and media and their location on time on a timeline, um, track names and types. Uh, it won't bring any markers or input-output information or if you have plugins on anything or if you have sends on anything because that stuff's all handled differently by different softwares. So this is just a, it's a, it's a, just a general, here's the basics of a session and I can import it and bring media with it into any softwares. All right, that being said, here is our tracking session from class. Um, we're gonna export an AAF file so that we can then, I can demonstrate importing uh, into a new session with an AAF. So up here at File, Export, right here at the top, Selected Tracks is new AAF or OMF. Um, Note that it says selected tracks. Right now, it would have just exported the kick. So I need to make sure I select everything. And we're going to see what it brings and what it doesn't once we import it. It might bring some of this information and not others. We'll check it out. So now that I've selected everything, I'm going to go to import session. Oh, what am I doing? I'm going to go to export selected tracks as new AAF, OMF. We're going to pick AAF. The time code here defaults to whatever your session is. Um, we're not converting anything. We're keeping everything 4848. So we don't need to worry about that. And we're going to keep waves and a bit depth of 24. Um, this is what they're going to do in, with copying. Um, consolidate from source media is fine. It's going to bring all of the active clips in my timeline. Everything I'm actively using in this edit window will be copied along with the AAF session file. All right, let's hit OK. We'll name it um, uh, AAF export one, just because. We will make a new folder for it on the desktop. One AAF export one. Just because it's going to bring the file, it's going to bring audio clips with it too, so we want to make sure it all goes in the same spot. Hit OK. OK, this is for the converted audio file. So where is it going to put the audio? We're going to pick the same folder. And it's going to do its thing. So it's basically copying the clips and media from this session into that folder to go along with the AAF. So when I want to import the data from this AAF into a new session of whatever software, i got to bring this folder because it needs this audio to come along with it. And once it's done, we will close this session and import into another one. I'll go kind of quick so I can show you importing into Pro Tools. And I actually can open up Logic and I can uh, show you how an AAF transferred over into Logic. All right. So now once that's done, I'm going to save and close session. And you're going to see the AAF export right here in this folder. You have your AF export AF. This is the actual file that contains all the session data, and then there's all the audio. It renamed it all. So don't worry when you import a new session, it will remembers the names of the tracks and will put things on the right tracks. So I'm gonna go back to Pro Tools, I'm gonna hit new, I'm gonna say AAF import session uh, 4824, because that's what we're doing. All right, so to import an AAF file, import session data. 
what we're going to do is get to our AAF export folder and select the AAF file itself. This is what's bringing, this contains all the data we want. I'll hit open. It's going to open the session data window. It's going to tell me all the information about the original format of everything. And since we're bringing content, you can, you know, adjust things in your timeline and time code or offset the media clips coming in so that they'll either come in exactly the way they were or you can offset them all by a certain amount or bars, beats, whatever. Um, link to source media impossible. We don't want to do that because, again, this just references the files in that folder that contains the AAF and all the files. It won't copy the files into this new session's audio files folder. We want to copy them. Copy from source media. We'll copy everything. So let's do that. We don't have any video. We're not converting anything. I selected all the tracks. Note that the aux input track for the cue and the master did not show up here. So we can bring audio tracks and the content on them, but your master track and your aux input tracks and stuff don't copy through an AAF. Most likely that's because different softwares address those types of tracks differently. There's not a universal way that between everybody that those are, you know, addressed. Session data, um, if you had automation and clip gain and things or rendered effects, but we didn't, so I'm going to uncheck those. You just got to pay attention to what you're bringing in and what you want to get out of that other session. Playlists, uh, import if we got them. Markers to import, well, all, why not? All right, now track data. You'll notice that if you were importing session from Pro Tools to Pro Tools and using a Pro Tools session file as the file instead of the AAF to get info from, this list is longer because there's some sp specific to Pro Tools things you could transfer from session to session. This list of track data is shorter because this is the stuff that's universal that all the different da DAWs and video editing softwares can read about on each track. So each of these tracks has all this information. We're going to say all because we're just importing everything this AAF's got into this session. I'm going to hit OK. It's locating things. Sometimes I like to... Oh, can't do it right now. I was going to open the project. You can open up the uh, task manager and watch processes just in case you are sitting here wondering what the computer's doing. Task manager will show you all the processes that Pro Tools is undergoing. So you can see as it, you know, they're becoming active clips in the clip bin over here as it's importing. And it's writing the waveform picture into the wave cache file. And we'll sit here for a second and watch these things load. So you can see that that didn't bring any markers, didn't bring anything, but all the clips are on the timeline the exact same way they were, so they'll line up. All the tracks have the same names. They will, it will not bring input and output information. This defaulted to my out one, two, and no inputs because it's just the default. So it did bring all the tracks and properly name them, and even though the files in that AAF folder that were exported got renamed into some crazy names, Note how it's restoring them back to what they were actually named. And now it's done. There you go. So this Pro Tools session now, I can go ahead and mix or do whatever I'm doing or overdub some stuff, but I did lose a lot of information. I didn't bring any sends that I had or inserts, any of the panning or levels. So you're basically starting fresh. Um, but, you know, that's better than nothing. You got everything you needed to at least get the job done. So let's close this. I'm going to quit Pro Tools. Let's see really quick, just if I can do it relatively fast. We're going to open Logic, and we're going to op import that AAF into Logic um, just to demonstrate how another DAW or piece of software can take AAFs. Is it working? No. Okay, let me try again. Oh, there it is. All right. Let's see how Logic handles this. All right. Uh, empty project. 
All right. Logic always makes you create a track. All right. So what I'm going to do is file. We're not really going over Logic, but I'm just going to clarify what I'm doing. File, import. AAF is just an option. You probably still can with other or some other way um, import OMFs and stuff. Look, this can work directly with Final Cut. Final Cut's an Apple product, so you can, you know, go back and forth really, really uh, quick. So we're going to do AAF. Here it is. It's already selected AAF export. I'm going to select that AAF file. One second. I don't know what it was doing. Import AAF. Why will it not let me select it? There we go. Import. Uh, logic. Bam. Look at that. You can see up here, logic shows you this little progress bar that's thinking and doing things. It's probably, um, uh, you know, loading the session files. It won't let me do much right now. It's processing heavily, apparently. But you can already see the audio clips have come in here. They are lined up the way they were. Um, we'll let... Uh, Logic do its thing. You can see it's bringing the samples in. This is the uh, Logic, you know, clip bin. Um, and once we get in here, once it's done, I'll show you. Either way, um, not to believe, make this take too long. An AAF file, again, is a file. It's, it's kind of like a session file that's a kind of a universal one that contains only information that all the different DAWs pretty much and video editing softwares can read. So if you need to share your session across DAWs, which happens a lot, um, go ahead and use an AAF format to export and share things. Cool. That's it.